Welcome to Game Crunch, your weekly video game podcast. My name is Mike Anastasia. With me today, we have Brandon. Hello. We're here to talk about games and things. Games and things. And what's on the agenda today? Nobody I haven't knows. written anything down, but I'm just going <laughs> to tell you. <laughs> so you don't have anything, as you were telling me before we went live. You're like, I, yeah. I ain't done shit. All right, so um, I'll just say I played a lot more of Helldivers 2, and I actually want to talk a bit about that yeah. and how I think this is one of the better live service games because how they handle everything. Okay. Um, so I, I've mentioned before that Helldivers 2 is operated by one guy who's basically like the DM, like the dungeon master in like D&D, but mm-hmm. controlling the game instead and all the stuff that we have to do to like liberate different planets and stuff. Uh, super cool. I really, really like that element. Um, because there's that element there and we keep getting orders that come in from the higher ups, mm-hmm. it makes it so this game, as it's constantly evolving, you actually feel like this is a live service that's changing like weekly, not just like, you know, we have some updates here next month or a few months down the road or whatever. There's like weekly changes and it does feel like a game that's evolving with its player base. And mm-hmm. because of that, I really do think that this is probably one of the best ways a live service title has ever been made. Like, period like you know we've got like Fortnite and everything where it is an evolving world it is really cool the way they handle all that and i do think that is one of the better live service games also it's free to play but as for helldivers 2 i really think that the way they've so they've implemented in the live service elements and the meta like weapons that you can that you should use or that would be best for your character class or whatever and the mm-hmm. way they've been able to like rotate those out by introducing new battle passes that you can just earn in game obviously as i've mentioned before and this sort of stuff uh, as new like chapters unfold like weekly it's really made it feel not like I'm working towards a battle pass, but we're, like we're working towards a common goal to like actually unlock things and new weapons to like do more damage against different kinds of enemies. And when you're like going for those like daily missions, it's like crafted in a way that as they're introducing new items into the game, and as they think the players that have been playing should be getting to those new items in the game. Um, Mm -hmm. that it gives you kind of like a little tutorial showing you how to use those new items by having that be your daily, like kill this sort of enemy. That's like, Oh, that's an enemy that I didn't know existed. And now I find out this enemy existed and I, and I have this new uh, way to actually defeat them. And the way that you defeat them is, you know, via blah, 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 you know, whatever, like whatever the daily for that day is or whatever. And I really think that's like a genius way to do this. It has been, such a breath of fresh air to see a game Mm -hmm. that more or less just kind of lets you do things Mm -hmm. and it lets you do things in a way that it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like it's holding my hand which is awesome but it also doesn't feel like it's leaving me completely in the dark which is also awesome Mm -hmm. I, i think having that element of you know discovery while not being completely vague and you know, just leaving you to fend for yourself and how things are introduced to you and in, in the way that they are really makes this game feel alive. And like, it's like a living, breathing thing, like something you continuously check into and new stuff is there and you get to exist alongside the new stuff and learn as everyone else is learning. I think that's really fucking cool. And probably one of the best ways that a live service game has been done ever, to be completely honest. So uh, the question is how long this will last. And Mm -hmm. I know they've got new stuff in the works right now. So a lot more stuff is going to be coming down the pipeline soon or over time. Um, But yeah, I I just, I'm excited to see where this game is going. I think this game has a massive amount of potential and I'm very happy for it. Yeah, it sounds like it's a pretty good game. Yeah, and it's it's always the trick part too. Like when you get something like this is like, can they maintain? Because that's the hard part. Yeah. Yeah. But you feel like even if they couldn't like maintain this what they're doing right now, um, the core game that we have here, right, is Mm -hmm. so good that it's fine. That's fine. But like on top of it, the fact that we are getting all this new stuff every like week is 
very impressive. And the fact that there is a actual person that is their job title is just the dungeon master of the game itself. And we're continuously fighting against this one person. That's fucking cool. That's just so cool. I'm so happy for it right now. It, it does feel like being a part of something, which in some respect is kind of what the whole game is supposed to feel like. Like you're a, 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 a cog in the machine, essentially. And you're just one part to something that's continuously moving, essentially. Mm-hmm. And I, I just love it. This game's awesome. Yeah, it sounds like it's, it's very cool. And then the other game that I played, yeah. uh, a new mm-hmm. edition, is okay. called Balatro. And oh, I'm going to. I've interest... been meaning to ask you about this <laughs> for like two weeks. <laughs> it's so good. It's so I good. Like, it's I saw so some good. really good things about it. And I was like, it's okay, so good. <laughs> this sounds like a good game. And then I was also like, oh, this sounds like a game that Brandon would really like. And it's I'm like, so good. And I'm, I'm like, I'm surprised <laughs> that he has not mentioned this to me yet because it seems like something that he'd really it like. Is... It ticks all his boxes. <laughs> you Maybe know what? Game, card game, <sighs> roguelike. It makes me so happy that you know me so well that the second I mentioned this, you're like, dude, this is what I thought you would have already played by now. So um, this one squeaked by me, and I didn't actually see it release or any of the hype because this released. I saw nothing same... about it until yeah, the it's, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's fucking climbing fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, this released on my birthday week, so I didn't even see that this existed. So I missed it because I was uh, engulfed in hell divers, basically. Uh, I just picked this up and. When I say just pick this up, I mean like five hours ago. <laughs> okay, so, you, so five hours ago means you probably had about thirty hours of the game so far. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've only I've only gone through like three games, and I have only have like an hour in playtime right now. But that's okay. still a decent amount for only having picked this up like five hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> at this point, I really like this game. So, um, Slay the Spire is the game that I always come back to when I talk about roguelike deck builder and how every game tends to be like that game Mm -hmm. and how it's kind of getting old and i like pointed to that game a long time ago when we were talking i was like this is going to be a game that everyone copies and we're going to have all these roguelike deck builders and blah 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 i i mentioned it on the podcast like i literally said that and um it got old very quickly some of them really fun some of them not so much um and then it started being just like nothing was innovated on that kind of genre this this cured that this game is so interesting the way it works um it is very different from your normal roguelike deck builder and who would have guessed that an, a gambling addiction would be what would make it innovative <laughs> um but no it's it's super interesting the way this works i really need to look further into this because i haven't put enough thought into things i haven't gotten like super super into this yet as i've already told you but yeah. um but this is the kind of game that's gonna like hook me pretty hard i feel um and this is also the kind of game that I wanted to tell you about because this is another one of those games that I wanted to talk about now and tell you that it is awesome so that hopefully when it comes to consoles in the future, you can try it out because it's really cool. I think it already and- is on console. I added <gasps> it to my, to my Switch wish list. Oh my probably. god! This is an awesome game. I highly recommend it. If it's already on consoles, yeah, this is so cool. Is it on console? It's on Switch already! <gasps> yes! Okay. This, I was this... say, I'm like, I added it to my wish list. I didn't I'm know like... it was already on consoles. That's so cool. So, because of that now, I this game, this game's fucking cool. Highly recommend it. That That's <laughs> really the long and short of it. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. totally expect to, to, to have this game by the end of the year. I would that's say. awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, I'll give you like a little rundown of essentially how it is. Uh, you start out with the ability to have three hands that you can make and three discards. Um, what this means is you're given like a set of, I believe it is eight cards. Yes, eight cards. And the eight cards are random. And it's going to be any kind of card that could you be used to form a poker hand. And then you put together the best hand you can out of those eight cards. You play that hand. And then now you have two hands left or or if you discarded from that now you have still three hands but you you've lost one of your discards and what you want to do is reach the amount of chips that's required and each card has a chip value and you can also get joker cards which are kind of like your your modifiers and joker cards make it so that um 
it, it will like add a multiplier or like if you don't use any face cards this time get double the points or triple the points or some some shit like that and uh there's lots of little things and essentially the joker cards as well as these um i believe they're called celestial ca- celestial cards um are what really adds to it some of these cards that you can get you can put onto other cards in your hand and that permanently changes the abilities of that card so like you whereas you just had like an ace before you can add it so if this ace is played with like other cards then you get like fucking 10 times multiplier of whatever you end up having at the end of that hand essentially Mm -hmm. and you want to continuously build your deck with these cards and with these abilities in mind so that you can beat the maximum amount of chips that you need to earn by the end of each round. And then there's also like a little shop, you know, like you would have in any other roguelike, that sort of thing, once you've finished a round. And you take the money that you earn from that round, and then you buy things. And the shop has things like different card packs that you can buy. And those different card packs give you those joke cards that I mentioned, or those ability cards that are permanent that you could stick on your cards, or a one-time hand ability card which you can use once to like help yourself out of like a tight spot essentially but it's like really powerful those are so you have all of that and when you like piece it all together it really makes this super addictive and really interesting card game that's very different from these other roguelike deck builders and i i kind of love this one so far i i Honestly, I just want to play it right now. So, you know, let's just wrap this up as soon as possible. <laughs> I've heard nothing but good things. So. It's great. Yeah, I, I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I'm excited that you like it because that means I probably will like it too. So, yeah. I just double check. I'm like, yep, still on my wish list. It's not, it's not even really radically expensive either. It's only like 15, no, it's 15 bucks. Yeah. But I was like, I'll just keep it there. For, yeah, for it's money, definitely, definitely worth checking out. Apparently, they just sold 1 million copies on PC. So that's fucking cool. So yeah, that's how they're working on a mobile version. Was kind of the news as well along with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this really came out of nowhere though, and um, I I kind of love it. So no, yeah, it's a cool concept. I it, I I don't want to like say things too soon, but it really has like the hooks in me, like Vampire Survivors did when I first played it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I'm thinking about how the game works right now mm-hmm. <laughs> while I'm talking, and mm-hmm. that's like. That's the signs of something that will probably have some some staying power, essentially. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited awesome. to see how this uh, evolves over time, basically, mm-hmm. and how my thoughts on this game. You yeah, know, okay, I'm interested in hearing your update next week. Yeah, 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 definitely. Mm-hmm. I might, yeah, I might yeah. like wait, wait a week or two until like I get really deep into it, and then, mm-hmm. then come back and give you some thoughts on it. But yeah, it's good. I, I like it so far. It's really fun. So all right. there you go. That's that's all I played. That's literally all I played. That in Fortnite, right. but you don't really want to hear that I've been playing the bootleg version of Rock Band. <laughs> so whatever, no. you know. It's kind of like there's always so many things to say about things. Like this week, I think I just played primarily Vampire Survivors. I had nothing extra to add nice. on it, so I don't have anything mm-hmm. really to talk about there. And I'm trying to think. I don't think we really watched anything. I don't even think like TV or movie wise, I have anything exciting to talk about. I know we're excited about for the Fallout TV show because that's soon. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's it. I don't have don't have any terribly exciting gaming updates this week. Yeah. So yeah, that's just just where I'm just in a in a, like a in between period right now. I'm just waiting. For yeah, no, mm-hmm. I understand. Yeah, uh, ready to move on to news? Yeah, absolutely. I did remember we have we have an extra piece of well I guess they're two technically rumors but they seem like they're somewhat legitimate the PS5 Pro leaked that was the other actual that, like, news that is going to be week. something that I use as a jumping off point as to uh, our uh, little small chat that we're going to have okay. uh, and the other thing is and we'll talk well in fact you're going to do that we'll talk about the other thing first which is yep. that the PS VR2 production is apparently on hold just to let inventory catch up to supply. Yeah, um, with their announcement of wanting to bring it to PC in the future, I think that's when that inventory will catch up to you know some demand essentially. Yeah, at least get things moving. They got um, to. They've got to because it has been a massive flop on consoles. So it is not. It's not yeah. panned out well for them essentially. Oh yeah, um, but I don't think there's any terrible surprise here that they're having difficulty moving units. So no, um, no. but I'll be interested to see if there's any. Any significant changes when it comes to PC? 
Um, I think there will, because like, if you look at, if, oh, I'm sorry, uh, I was just going to say, I think there will, because if you look at what we've got right now on PC, we've got a $1,000 headset. We've got another thousand dollar headset. We've got the, um, the quest, like yeah, the, the Oculus quest and quest mm-hmm. three. So $500, whatever that sort of thing. Um, the in between of of um, a six fifty dollar headset with a lot of good um, features that some of these five hundred dollar headsets and the three hundred dollar headsets definitely don't have. I do think that's going to be very enticing to the PC market because it's a much more affordable VR headset. And then also, if someone already has a PlayStation Five as well as a PC, then that would be even more enticing because you now have two reasons to have that headset instead of mm-hmm. just one. Yeah. And I think that's that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. It could be. <laughs> I mean, we'll let Sony fuck it up somehow, though. So. Yeah. Maybe. They might. Uh, they could. Um, all right. You ready to talk about the PS5 Pro yes, then? Yes, yes, yes. I wanted to talk about the PS5 Pro for multiple reasons. And I yeah. will go ahead and share mine now. Um, essentially, my main thoughts are, do we need a Pro console? No, we we already know this. Yes, but also let's. There, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, you know, PS5 Pro is coming. It's going to be fucking incredible. It's going to be able to do this, that, and the other. And my thoughts are like, yeah, but like we were sold a PS5 on 8K gaming, right? That's on the box. Mm-hmm. 8K gaming is on the box. Now, granted, 8K gaming is also on. Well, not 8K gaming, but 8K is also on the box of the. Um, the series x but that 8k is for hdr video playback which mm-hmm. i believe it does support i'm not 100 percent sure but it is for hdr video playback so like you're i don't even know if 8k dvds or i mean uh, blu-rays are made right now so i, I don't know it would probably anyway, just be digital i would guess yeah that's that that would make sense but either way um the PS5 was sold on 8K gaming specifically, and there's not a single game outside of a game called The Tourist that does 8K gaming, but even that developer said that, hey, that's not even enabled in the PS5 right now. So why are they selling the PS5 Pro as a 120 to, you know, 124K, uh, 60 8K, you know, this beast that people are claiming that it is in these these uh, leaks, uh, mm-hmm. and now slowly backpedaling to being like, eh, it's it's going to be an improvement. I, I don't know if you've seen. We've gone from like, it's going to do this, it's going to obliterate this, to like, so the CPU isn't even different. And then today, people were like, so we got the dev kits for the PS5 Pro. They're the same as the PS5 almost. <laughs> and it's just like, Huh? What? Is, what? Is, what's? What's? Uh? What's going on here? You know, essentially. And then the other thing that I wanted to bring up about this, just hear your thoughts on it, was, um, uh-huh. you know, we had the pandemic, we yep. had the graphics cards, the chip shortage, and all that stuff. Some people right now don't even have a PS5, and you cannot walk into a store still, like a normal store, like a Target or Walmart or whatever, and just buy a PlayStation Five. You still can't do it. You, you can buy it online through Sony. You can buy it online through other retailers and that sort of thing. You can buy it online and go pick it up. But you can't just walk into a store and have it readily available for you like you can, um, you know, in the past with like PS4 or Xbox One, that sort of thing. And mm-hmm. that's also the case in some places for Series X. But I see that a lot more on the shelves because no one wants them, essentially. <laughs> but um, but with a console that's already so scarce that being the ps5 or having to jump through hoops to actually get yourself one and not just having it readily available like they used to be during the ps4 generation why the fuck do we need a pro console when people barely even have the original why the fuck do we need a pro console when people that got a ps5 aside from people such as myself that pre-ordered it initially um didn't get it until like two two and a half years into its lifespan like it feels like this is such a rushed half step to a console that the improvement is going to be so minimal that it's got it's going to be a laughing stock and it's going to be a waste of money 
Yeah. I hope I'm wrong, but it feels that way because the technology hasn't been able to catch up yet. And the price to performance is also going to be difficult to get, you know, honed in on with the way that, you know, still we're starting to have another chip shortage. We're starting to have SSD shortages. We're starting to have shit like that. And you think you're going to be able to make a pro console in that time, keep it down to a affordable price point and then also release it and have it make money. No, I think if it gets released, less people are going to buy it than it, than would have if it's over the $600 price point. And I think with what we're seeing and what's being talked up, this will be over a $600 price point for this console if a Pro gets made, and the improvements will be minimal at best. And I, I, I just think this is a very big misstep, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. Um, a, Sony doesn't even have any first-party games to support a release this year, so That's I don't true. know what they're thinking about doing they have another not- console. Um I mean, granted, though, maybe that's so. The rumor has it as like, oh, it, it could release as early as this fall. Uh, I, I would be skeptical. I mean, Sony might. I think that they'll mm-hmm. push back the console until they have something to release it with. I, they can't be that dumb. <laughs> but who knows? I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Cause like, twenty twenty five will be their year essentially supposedly we got wolverine coming out then we've got whatever the next last of us uh project is maybe the last of us part two uh remake remaster who fucking knows um (laughs) um it uh more spider-man stuff or whatever i think all that stuff is coming in 2025 or late 2025 Mm -hmm. i think they should take more time and release the pro in late 2025 and completely just ignore 2024 for right now they can just coat stuff literally microsoft doing nothing and switch being the switch and then then they get to uh fight with nintendo when they release their new switch but there won't even be a fight because you know nintendo its improvements going to be minimal to none You, you know how that is well, I mean, it probably won't be a hardware fight, but definitely be, you know, it's kind of, I guess on the flip side, though, you Sales. could say the same thing about PlayStation's software efforts. So, yeah. <laughs> minimal to none. So, yeah. You're um, right. Because, I mean, that's always been Nintendo's thing. You know, it's like, hey, we'll make the games. People will accept the hardware. So, yeah, no matter what it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Because um, they, they, you know, they, they, they generally do build their hardware around their software and then you know vice versa so yeah mm-hmm. um but yeah i 100 percent agree that we don't need a pro i don't know why this exists and i don't know what they think i mean it, it made sense in a different generation it yeah. does not make sense here so um and especially like we were talking about last week they don't have any sort of I guess maybe like standards in terms of like what they want games to be like on the system, uh, yeah. in terms of performance. So, um, you know, they might benefit. I think they'd benefit more from being like, "Hey, let's try to make all of our releases X, Y, and Z." And then you know, just do whatever you want. We don't care. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel. I'm I'm just worried that they're gonna shoot themselves in the foot because like they have such a lead right now. <laughs> that the only thing they can do by releasing a pro is to is to hamper their themselves like with sales and that sort of thing. And they, and from what I understand, they already are having trouble with sales right now. Like sales figures are down across the entire console console industry right now. Um, but PlayStation also said that they underperformed or some shit. I don't fucking know exactly what it was, but it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, and I, I just I don't get it. I don't get why we need a pro and i feel like the only this is only a poor decision in every way shape and form like only bad things can come from this yeah and it just seems like it's uh just you're not going to get that return on investment no absolutely not. and for the production um, yeah and then the the players are probably not going to have that much of a like you know uptick in performance over <laughs> the original ps5 and no. if they do, they're going to be paying a premium, probably like seven hundred, eight hundred dollars, and that's a fucking ridiculous amount, you know. Yeah. Then when you look at it that way, it does sound like it's going to have some scaling available. So I mean, all of that. Yeah, uh, but here's the thing: if you have scaling available, you're no longer 4K. You're no longer 8K. You're just scaled up. That that's all it is, you know. It's like if I play, if I play Helldivers two, 
and I use FSR or whatever, and I have it set to ultra performance, that's no longer 4K that I'm playing it in. I'm not playing it in 4K. It's not a 4K game. So again, why does it matter that you're like, you could put, <laughs> most scaling things are done, I don't know, like FSR has been injected into the games themselves. So like, couldn't FSR just be, I don't actually know entirely how it works. Because like FSR is available in every game that supports it on PC, no matter what mm -hmm. graphics card you have, right? Yeah. So my thoughts are like, could that be introduced to PlayStation 5 retroactively? Because if it can, then like, you know, what? why are we doing this? The scaling could be retroactively introduced to past systems, and you could have the same performance uptick. I see. I, I think they'll yeah. probably use it as a. I think they'll use it as a feature of this. Uh, they'll use it as a selling point, a hundred percent. That's what yeah. that's what uh, Nvidia did with their forty series card, and I fell for it. Uh, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, uh, but my, that would be my guess. They'll just be like, oh yeah, you can. It's just it's uh, exclusive to this system. So if you want it, you got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, look how much nicer Final Fantasy VII Rebirth looks on this. Ooh ah. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh ah. Yeah. That's great. Thanks. <laughs> I did play more Rebirth. Rebirth has gotten better the more I play of it. But um, we're we're just gonna move on past that. I I just wanted to like throw that in there because I didn't play enough for it to matter. But mm -hmm. um, while we were talking about this, I did think of one other thing because it popped up. Uh, mm -hmm. the new way family sharing works on Steam. Uh, which yeah. was a uh, so family sharing is a feature that's always been on Steam, and essentially the way it worked before was um, someone that logs in on your system. Mm -hmm. be it officially or unofficially, you know what I'm saying? Like someone in person or someone, yeah. you know, not in person logging in with their account, allowing you to because they share their password with you or whatever, and then you can play their games. And yeah. the way that that worked initially was if they were in another game and you were playing one of their games, it would kick you out of the game, even if it wasn't the other game that that person was trying to play. And that mm -hmm. was the way it's always worked. Steam introduced a new thing called Steam Family, and this just came out yesterday, and I'm just now starting it today. Uh -huh. With Steam Family, you get sent invites over the internet to the family, and the family that you get added to, then every single one of their games is playable to you, the person that's in that family, and all of your games are playable to them and everyone else that's in the family as well. It can be up to five people, Mm -hmm. And it, and all the games are just available to be played immediately once you've been accepted in the family and other people as well. Um, so the difference in this versus the original family sharing was that in the original family sharing, if you changed your Steam hardware, it would invalidate your family sharing. It would kick you out of family sharing. If you okay. changed your uh, software, like reinstalled Windows or whatever, it would also kick you out of family sharing. Now it's an account-based thing. And also, you know how I mentioned before, if you're playing a game and then someone else wants to play a different game, it would kick you out of family sharing. Mm -hmm. That's no longer the case anymore. As long as you're not playing the same game as that person, you can play any game that you have in your family sharing list now. Okay. Which is a great new tool uh, that has just been introduced by Steam. I don't know how long it's going to stick around, uh, but we will see because I, I think it's an incredible way to allow people in the same household or maybe friends, <laughs> you know, that uh, mm -hmm. have thousands and thousands of games to share between each other. <laughs> so, you know, much like people do with PlayStation and Switch and so on and so forth. Um, and it's now a lot easier to do it on Steam as well than it was before without the fear of, oh, am I changing my computer? Am I no longer going to have access to those libraries? Nope. You just have it now, no matter what. Oh. Okay. So there's that. All right. And uh, I have already tested it. Mm -hmm. I installed one of my friend's games before I got on here, and he was playing something else, and I got in it, and it just let me play like it was my own. Very so, nice. That's super cool and super convenient, and I hope that it stays. Uh, it's currently in beta right now and testing, and so far, I like it. So we'll see how that continues in the future. Okay. I've now added uh, one, two, three. Let's see. Uh, me, 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 me. We have... Wait. Me, 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 me. 
we have four people currently in our family. I was making sure there wasn't a fifth. Oh, okay. So um, that is 2,000 games shared between us. Wow. <laughs> Not including my own. So. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Now, granted, some of these games go all the way back to, like, you know, fucking 2009, 2004, that sort of shit. Oh, I'm sure. But, you know, yeah. uh, it's it's a lot of things. It's a, it's it's options, and I am always down for options. So mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with options. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's why I like playing on PC, because you have so many options. Yeah. Um... Oh, although I have been really enjoying my time just kicking back and playing uh, Final Fantasy on PS5 lately. It's It's fun. It's really fun. And it's just relaxing and chill experience yeah i think that's it i got nothing else i'm i think i'm done honestly oh yeah yeah i don't have anything extra either so this is just gonna be a short episode this week mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah i know you needed that so i know <laughs> trying to think i even have anything else even to drag it out a little bit even only barely uh i don't know if you heard jack black saying baby hit me one more time Someone I never knew I needed link, it in Was my it life. you that linked it to me? Yeah. Or was it someone else? Okay, I said yeah. it out the other day. I yeah, did not I know how much I needed that in my life. But it I is, haven't watched it, but I, I have seen that it exists. I I saw someone be like, oh, yeah, this is amazing. And I was like, oh, you know, whatever. I'm like, it's Jack Black. It's Britney Spears. How good could it be? It's good. I, I mean, you listen to, you've heard Tenacious D, right? His yeah. his actual mm-hmm. band. I mean, Jack Black's fantastic. He's 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 legitimately a really good singer, and oh, Kyle Gass is a fantastic musician as well. So but would I mean, you have been like, oh, Jack Black hit me, baby, one more time? Honestly, yeah, be? he's super goofy. He he likes to have fun with things, but he's also very passionate about things. So like, I I understand. I I, <laughs> I definitely understand. Well, I, I think for me, it just really kind of hit the. Uh, the cover notes that I wanted it to. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, sometimes you get covers that are just too far away and you get yeah. covers that are too similar. And this one is just, like, it is perfect. Like, I don't have anything. I think You it's, got me it's, wanting to just click the link right now and watch it, so I'm just going to do should. that. Give me a second. Mm-hmm. Let's see how, how it sounds. It's only a minute 40 seconds. Might as well give it a go. Yeah, it's a truncated version of the song. They do have, he actually did like a full version as well. Um, but like for the YouTube kind of like promo, it is like a, mm-hmm. it's kind of a half version. I don't think I've seen a more infectious person than Jack Black performing that song. It's just, I, I'm just so oh. happy watching it's, it. it. It's just so good. He's it having really so is. much fun. He's yeah. having so much fun. I'm so happy for him. He must be protected at all costs. That is yeah. that is the law. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, I, and, and I right, it is like so infectious. Like yeah. it's been stuck in my head for like days now. I just mean so. like he's so happy and and it makes me happy seeing him yeah. that, that way. I mean, <sighs> even listening to it, actually to oh, what were you gonna say? I was going to say, Tenacious D has always been a great band, and Jack Black has always been really fun. And yeah, that man, that man's consistently fun in everything he does. I watched him when he streamed for a while. He mm-hmm. was he was so enjoyable. I watched him when he tried to learn about video game things and like be more receptive to it. And then I was like, why the fuck is he doing this? And then he put out the game about uh, the video, uh, the music video about video games. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah he, and it's like, uh, dude's just just happy to be there <laughs> i did really like this is actually i, I guess to, to bring jack black into news because this is actual video game news from this last week mm-hmm. um but i did really there was an interview comment from jack black recently where they were talking about the minecraft movie mm-hmm. and he's like i don't want to speak too soon but he's like i think i might be getting an oscar for this one <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> So that had me laugh. Um, but yeah, I mean, he is, you know, even, I guess, irrelevant. He does have, you know, decent history of video games, too, between Brutal Legends and the Mario movie. And, yeah, you know, he was incredible in Brutal Legend. And that and, had, like, an all-star cast. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And um, I guess even movie-wise, uh, Jumanji, it's kind of actually a video game-ish movie. If you watched yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's good. But yeah, if you, and listeners. Looking for something fun to watch on YouTube. Definitely check out Jack Black and Hit Me Baby one more time. Not what I expected, 
much better than you can I, imagine. I absolutely agree. It's mm-hmm. it's incredible. Very, very well done. All right. Now that's actually everything. I <laughs> oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you showed me that. I wish I would have watched it sooner. <laughs> but I'm glad I did now. I that was so fun. I'm glad I remembered to ask you about it. So <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up? Uh no, I think I'm good. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for listening to us tonight. Don't forget to find us on Stitcher, Google, Amazon, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. We're there. Also, our website, game-crunch.com, has all of our new episodes and all of our old episodes, all of the episodes. And if you want to reach out to us, send us an email at gamecrunchcast at gmail.com. Brandon. Hello. Any final thoughts? Um, No. Um, I'm good, basically. Okay. Well, then for me, my name is Mike Anastasia. You can find me online on Clash of Penguin there or on your favorite gaming console. And until next week, game on. Game on. My volume's all the way up. Hello. Let's try that again. No, I could hear you last time. Yeah, but the problem was I have this volume knob on my mm-hmm. headset, and if I turn it all the way up where I can hear the game volume, it cuts out any voice chat. So I can mute all voice chat and just be immersed in the game. But oh. if I kick it one down, then I can hear Discord chats and actually chat with people. So okay, so you couldn't hear me. But I, I could, could not hear, hear you. you. Correct, correct. Got correct. it. That makes yes. more sense. Because yep. I'm like, I can hear you fine. And I'm like, and you're like, I adjusted the volume. I'm like, well, it didn't sound exactly the same. No, I, <laughs> dude, this headset is so good. This is one of is the best. Is this still your headset. Sony headsets? This is my Sony headset that I paid $41 for that's worth 150 plus or 200 if it's brand new. Yeah, yeah. that one. It's so good, dude. It is incredible what they have done with this thing. I'm very happy with it. I can, like, um, for instance, I could be on my PS5 right now, and I mm-hmm. would just be able to throw Discord over to it and use mm-hmm. Discord and the PS5 at the exact same time, both sounds mm-hmm. coming through the headset. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's super, super good. I love it. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty nice headset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these uh, end zones, that's what they're called. The You know how we made fun of the earbuds when Sony showed them off and everything? They they had the state of play where they announced headsets and earbuds. I mean, I remember the thing. I don't remember much about it other than that. Well, well, I'm just saying you do remember it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, this is that headset, and the headset is so fucking good. It deserved way better than what they did to it. <laughs> they just like threw it out there to die to be like, "Hey, this is a show about games." How about a headset? And it was just like, <laughs> God, you fucking idiots. You literally could have gave this thing its own time slot, like a, a video explaining how it works and everything, and people would have bought the fuck out of this. But they were stupid as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>